Teeth whitening strips promise this movie star smile, but are you actually whitening your teeth or are you just throwing your money down the drain? Luckily, I'm a dentist and I can help show you what ingredients actually matter in your teeth whitening strips. So make sure you guys stick around till the end because by the end of the video, you guys will know exactly which whitening strips will work best for you and which ones you kind of want to avoid. So whitening strips and like whitening trays and all these whitening products are generally trying to do the same thing and they involve one of a couple different ingredients. But whitening strip is basically like a piece of plastic that has this like gel infused in it that goes over your teeth and then you'll keep it there for like 15 30 minutes to like an hour kind of depends on the instructions and the percentage of the certain ingredients in there and then you'll take it off and then you might want to rinse your teeth and then you're done for the day and you want to probably keep this up for like a week or two weeks and sometimes like a little bit longer and some people might wonder like are these gels safe like are they safe for your enamel now if you take them the way that they are prescribed by your dentist or the way like the instructions are written on the box or whatever then yes, they are safe. But essentially the two main ingredients that you'll see are either hydrogen peroxide or carbamide peroxide. Now sometimes you'll see them both kind of combined, but those are the two main active whitening ingredients. Most commonly you'll see hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide has been proved and tested and it works really well. It doesn't just whiten the stains and get rid of the stains, it actually also whitens the enamel or your tooth structure. And it doesn't actually like break through your enamel, it actually kind of goes in and changes the bond structure of these stains and like the color of your enamel and it changes the way that light is reflected off of your teeth. So it makes your teeth actually appear more white. The only problem with hydrogen peroxide is it can make your teeth more sensitive because for the time as you're whitening your teeth, your enamel gets a little bit more porous. So now you're kind of exposing like the nerve inside of your tooth. So like cold air or cold water can sometimes make your teeth feel really sensitive as you're doing this whitening. So for some people, they might want to kind of change the instructions a little bit. So sometimes a box will give you a packet of teeth whitening strips and they'll say just do it once every single day and then don't skip a day. But sometimes it's okay to skip a day, to actually just do like one on Monday, take a break on Tuesday, do it again on Wednesday. This is really good for people that have sensitive teeth. And you can even combine using like a sensitivity toothpaste because a sensitivity toothpaste will have ingredients in it that will actually kind of block those nerve endings and prevent you from feeling sensitive. So right after you do your teeth whitening, brush with that sensitivity toothpaste and then your enamel should start to feel a lot better. It won't feel as sensitive. The next main ingredient you're gonna see is carbamide peroxide. Now this is really similar to hydrogen peroxide and it does pretty much the same thing. And the reason is because carbamide peroxide, when it touches your water or your saliva, it will break down into hydrogen peroxide and then have urea as a byproduct. Now fun fact, carbamide peroxide was actually invented in World War I to be used as an antiseptic. But typically if you have like 10% carbamide peroxide, when it touches your saliva or touches your teeth, this will break down into 3% hydrogen peroxide and then the other byproduct will be the urea. Now what I really like about this is the urea actually will help prevent bacteria from growing on your teeth and your gums. And that's because the urea tends to change the pH a little bit in that environment and that kind of limits the bacteria growth. So this is actually really good for your teeth and your gums, but you want to make sure it's at the right percentage. So for example, if you see 10% carbamide peroxide, this is actually really good for your teeth and your gums. But most whitening products have a percentage that's way higher than this. So whether you're using hydrogen peroxide or carbamide peroxide, you want to be really careful and not to get any on your gums. If you get a little bit for like a little bit of time, it's not a big deal it might irritate the gums a little bit, might cause like a canker sore or might like cause a little bit of irritation, like a redness or like a little bit of sloughing, but it'll usually just heal fine on its own. But when you get these higher percentages of this carbamide or hydrogen peroxide and you leave it on your gums for too long, this can really start to hurt and cause problems. So try to avoid getting anything on your gums. But either way, if you use carbamide or hydrogen peroxide, they're really gonna whiten your teeth really well. They're like the best things that we have out there. Now the next ingredient I want to talk about that's getting a little bit more popular is something called PAP. Now forgive me, I'm not going to be able to pronounce it, but I'll give it my best shot. Phthalamidoperoxycaproic acid. Yeah, I probably butchered that. This is like a newer like peroxide alternative. Now my first question is, since the hydrogen and carbamide peroxide worked so well and didn't really have any issues, didn't really damage your enamel, especially if you used it the right way, then why do we make an alternative? Now I did pull up a study kind of talking about comparing this hydrogen peroxide, like the regular teeth whitening versus this PAP to see which one works better. So basically in the study what they did was they took these human teeth that were extracted and then they stained them. They put like coffee and stuff on them for like 
seven days to get them stained. And then they tried whitening these teeth with different things. So they use a placebo, they use something called bromelain, which is like something found in pineapple. They use baking soda, sodium chloride, PAP, and hydrogen peroxide. Those last two are really the only ones I cared about. The results were that everything lightened the stains. Now part of that was because this coffee was an actual surface stain. It's something that goes right on the surface. It's like something that you need to like actually remove by like polishing and if you polish your teeth, then your teeth are gonna look whiter because that coffee is just on the outer part of the tooth. So for example, like the baking soda is an abrasive thing and that'll just basically polish off that enamel. So obviously that's gonna make your teeth look whiter. But which one is actually whitening the tooth, like making the tooth actually whiter? And they found that the hydrogen peroxide whitened the teeth the most, which I was not surprised about. The PAP still removed the stains and made the teeth look a little whiter, but it did not alter the enamel. The actual color of the enamel stayed the same. And they tested this by looking under under a microscope and they found that the hydrogen peroxide was the only thing that actually changed the shade of that enamel. So takeaway from this is if you want something that actually whitens your enamel and makes your teeth actually look whiter, the hydrogen or carbamide peroxide are gonna be your best bet. And then I would basically avoid anything with too many ingredients. Now some ingredients will be good, like some ingredients will be good for like sensitivity, like for example, if you see potassium nitrate, that's really good for sensitivity. So people that have sensitive teeth, if you combine that with your teeth whitening, that's great. And then sometimes you'll see like hydroxyapatite or fluoride in the teeth whitening product. This is also good because it'll help strengthen and like kind of remineralize the teeth while you're getting them whitened. But if you see like things like baking soda or like charcoal or other things that are like abrasive in your teeth whitening product, that's not what you're gonna want because the teeth whitening really comes down to the hydrogen and carbamide peroxide. And anything more, like any abrasive is actually gonna make it worse. Because yeah, it might polish the teeth, but if you keep doing like that polishing too much, eventually you're gonna shave down too much of that enamel and then your teeth are gonna get even more sensitive and then also what might happen is your teeth might start to look more yellow because when you take away your enamel then your dentin is underneath and your dentin is yellow so if you really want to whiten your teeth look for a product that has either hydrogen or carbamide peroxide and then I would avoid like PAP or some of the other ingredients and then make sure you always follow the instructions either from your dentist or whatever it's like written on that box anyways thank you guys for watching I hope you liked that video if you haven't already make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below and I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, I found another cool video of literally a person doing a full root canal, a core, and a crown. Like you might be wondering what all these procedures are, but this guy's doing it in this video and the best part is it's not even a real patient, it's on a model. But this is like the best model I've seen. It's like, it looks like it's a real tooth, but it's actually not. So we're gonna react to it together. Let's get into it. <laughs> 